So there are several pests of plants that are non-insects, and if you remember, insects would have to have six legs, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So of course, one of our biggest pests, especially in the Pacific Northwest, are slugs and snails. They feed on, feed on living, dead, and decaying material. They also feed on fungi, algae, algae and lichens and they will also eat earthworms and dead slugs and snails. They're very sensitive to changes in moisture and temperature and they actually do some good by helping to form soil aggregates. So the two most common that we're going to have in Washington State will be the gray garden slug which is really quite small and the European slug and they vary in length from a quarter inch to 10 inches in length. So here are the parts of slugs, generally speaking. They're elongate. They have this dorsal fleshy mantle that encloses their vital organs and they move or glide on a foot. And then that foot is what secretes the slime that we know and love. So here's a general life cycle for slugs. Uh, let's start with the green. Egg laying occurs several hundred single or clutch of eggs in the spring. So that's March to May. After three to four weeks, they're born. Feeding will begin. By June to August, they're capable of reproduction and they don't need another slug to do this. September, November, moisture and optimum temperatures stimulate egg laying in the fall and um, really just depends on what kind of weather we're going to have. And then they do overwinter as adults, eggs, or young slugs. And the gray slug, gray garden slug, actually lives 6 to 12, maybe 18 months. Okay, so here's this little guy here feeding on some corn. And so they use this tooth-covered tongue as a rasp, rasp to scrape tissue from leaf surfaces. So they have rasping mouth parts. So they're hermaphrodites, so they don't actually need another slug to reproduce, but they may also mate. They can live between one to two years, and eggs can be laid any time of year, and of course, decreases in drier or colder weather and this is a lovely picture of slugs reproducing. I'll put a video up if you want to watch this. So they can lay up to 14, 400 eggs in a year. They may be in small groups or they may be in large groups up to 40. They're going to lay those eggs in moist places and they're colorless to milky white, about an eighth to a quarter inch in diameter. They hatch within a few weeks and of course they're nocturnal. I used to have an English ivy hedge, yes I know, um, back in the day and the minute the sun went down these slugs would come out like armies. Okay, so there are some natural enemies, garter snakes, birds, and frogs. Uh, as far as some birds include ducks, geese, and chickens. And then there are some species of ground beetles that will eat slugs. So sanitation is really important because if you've got a habitat for them, rocks, boards, and compost piles, these are shelters for slugs. And then there's areas next to gardens where they can hang out, and that would be tall grasses and weeds. So it's important to keep these areas clear if you're trying to event, prevent having slugs or snails in your garden. So stale bur beer attracts slugs and many insects. You can sink a beer can into the soil. There's also slug traps out there. They crawl into the liquid and drown. You can use copper barriers diatomaceous earth. If you're going to use chemical control, uh, sluggo, escargo, uh, look for iron phosphate as your product. Metaldehyde, that's going to be deadline or quarry, snail bait. Has, it smells very sweet to pets and they will eat it, so it's very toxic. Try to avoid using that.
And here's a couple of guys having a grand old time. This probably isn't deep enough. You're going to want to fill that to the top of that pie pan. I found this homemade slug trap online. So take a water bottle and uh, have a few holes and then bury them down in the ground. Here's a snake, excuse me, a slug and snail trap by Safer. And then here's some copper banding. So you may have heard about this. Tests show that they actually receive a, an electric shock when they crawl over the copper. This works only if the copper strip is wide enough to prevent them from rising their bodies over it. Keep in mind that the majority of copper stripping sold in garden shops for this purpose are not wide enough to create an effective barrier. And this is also a very expensive way to go. So if you're going to do it, make sure you're going for a very wide band. Okay, garden symphylans, not an insect. These are occasional pests of greenhouses, home gardens, and some commercial crops. They're found in every county in western Washington. And a couple of years back, we taught soils, and we had somebody bring in their soil from a raised bed where they had purchased that soil, which had a very high incidence of organic matter in it. And it was just filled with garden symphylans. So they're about a quarter inch long. They have a distinct head. They have six to 12 pairs of legs. They live in soil that are rich in, hot, in organic matter. So while we encourage organic matter a lot, it's also uh, too much can be a problem. So healthy soil would have about 5% organic matter. When you start getting above that 10, 20%, you're going to have issues with garden symphylin most likely. So they like all vegetables and small fruits. They do heavy damage to mint in western Washington which is a crop and they usually attack plants a few days after they're set out so you think you're okay and then all of a sudden they're gone. On tomatoes they'll injure older roots and eat new ones as soon as they develop. Plants will wilt in the daytime, stems will be bluish, upper leaves dark green, and lower leaves yellow, and then the plants will die. This is why they're feeding on the roots. These are roots that have been damaged by garden symphylin. So here just shows you kind of a picture of the uh, damage comparison. So these are both in the same garden. The one on the left is stunted because of garden symphylins and then the right is the same age in the same field. This is eggplant. So um, it's a serious pest out there when you do have it. So there's not a lot of great uh, management tools for this. Landscape rollers to compact soil. Well we already know that compacting soil is not a good idea. Tillage can can help but it also may damage the structure of your, your uh, soil. You can try rotating crops, however, uh, they have a broad uh, batch of plants that they will go for. And then predators include true centipedes, predator mites, predaceous ground beetles, and various fungi, but there's not a lot of research that shows that these are going to knock down the populations enough. Okay, so we have pill bugs and sow bugs. They're isopods. They're primarily decomposers, but sometimes they will feed on seedlings, new roots, and lower leaves. If you insist on managing these guys, you want to limit moisture and decaying matter. Used raised beds and black plastic mulch can help. 